Director Taika Waititi, best known for films like Jojo Rabbit, Hunt for the Wilder People, Boy, and Thor Ragnarok, has taken the cinematic world by storm with his playful and imaginative blend of drama and comedy. She doesn't want to talk to me. Mm -hmm. Well, you are a Nazi. I guess. So let's take a look at some of the prominent trademarks of this actor, writer, producer, and director. Most of Taika's films are told through a child's perspective, like Hunt for the Wilder People and Jojo Rabbit. This trademark was first on display in his 2004 Oscar-nominated short film Two Cars, One Night, in which two brash kids find friendship as they carry on a conversation in a parking lot. You wouldn't sell it? Nope. Why not? Because then I wouldn't have a diamond ring. Taika's most personal film, Boy, builds upon the themes explored in Two Cars, One Night, and is perhaps the best example of showing the adult world through the lens of a child. The main character, aptly named Boy, is a Maori youth living in a small New Zealand town who has to grow up quickly because of his environment. He spends his days fantasizing about the exploits of his estranged father, who just so happens to be played by Taika Waititi. And can you stop calling me dad? Taika frequently makes appearances in his own projects. He had a minor comedic cameo in Hunt for the Wilder People, he played the more favorable son in Eagle vs. Shark, he provided the motion capture and voice for the lovable Korg in Thor Ragnarok. I'm Korg, this is me. We're gonna jump on that spaceship and get out of here. Wanna come? And he starred in his vampire mockumentary, What We Do in the Shadows. Well, that didn't go so great. Um, I hit the main artery. On the upside, I think she had a really good time. But his roles in Boy and Jojo Rabbit really reinforce his trademark of seeing the world through a child's perspective. For example, Boy's imagined version of his father is shattered after he discovers that he's an immature loser, bully, and eh, a jerk. I thought I was like you, but I'm not. And very few directors would make a conscious decision to cast themselves as Adolf Hitler, especially when they're half Jewish. Don't get into the Nazi stuff. But Taika went for it in the most bizarre way possible. Similar to Boy, Jojo, an aspiring Nazi, also has this imaginary, idealized version of a paternal figure. But he too comes to the conclusion that his father figure is an immature loser, bully, and, well, you, you know, he's, he's Hitler. <laughs> Waititi's knack for creating weirdos, rebels, and outcasts like Jojo is seen in pretty much all of his films, from a collection of eccentric vampires participating in a documentary, to two star-crossed awkward lovebirds, to the unlikely duo of a crotchety southern New Zealander and a juvenile delinquent on the run from child welfare services. Well, I'm dying in a blaze of glory. Taika was somewhat of an outcast himself, growing up in a small town in New Zealand, raised by his mother, a schoolteacher, and father, an artist. You know, I'm always inspired by the outsider artist. I love people who can see things with an innocent viewpoint. Also, it's worth mentioning that Taika's own offbeat artistic sensibilities are often seen throughout his films. Visual symmetry is also a key trademark of Taika's cinematic style. Characters are often placed directly in the center of the frame, sometimes staring into the lens, and his frequent use of wide shots with deep focus helps immerse the audience into the world he's creating. Plus, his use of montages with either jump cuts or voiceover helps establish characters. Stealing, spitting, running away, throwing rocks, kicking stuff. He's a master carver, deep sea treasure diver, the captain of the rugby team. But what are some of Taika Waititi's cinematic influences? Terrence Malick's 1973 drama Badlands, which Taika has cited as a major influence in his work, has a similar visual and storytelling style, with characters on the run coming to terms with a harsh reality. Other Taika Waititi influences include Mike Nichols' classic The Graduate, Francois Truffaut's The 400 Blows and Jules and Jim, and Hal Ashby's Coming Home and Harold and Maude. He even found inspiration from two interesting sources for Jojo Rabbit, the dark comedy Heathers and Nickelodeon's Rugrats. You okay? Oh, no! oh 
Oh, God. Taika's mastery of comedy is a reason why he's been hired to direct major franchises in the Marvel and Star Wars universes. Oh, well. Hi, how you doing? Oh, no, not you, him. <laughs> He developed his comedic chops in the New Zealand comedy scene as a member of groups like So You're a Man and Humor Beasts alongside actor and frequent collaborator Jemaine Clement. While on set, Taika will often encourage actors to play in the space of comedy. But once I sort of realized that I wasn't being judged and that he was creating a kind of safe environment where you can goof around and not be penalized if you don't hit it out of the park every time, that freed me up a lot more. Another thing that Taika's good at is allowing a scene to just go a little bit longer than usual to get that extra comedic punch of subtle awkwardness. Even when he was brought on to direct a multi-million dollar extravaganza like Thor Ragnarok, his sense of comedic timing gave Chris Hemsworth the freedom to do something like this. But above all, Taika's ability to balance comedy and drama is what makes his films unique. Amidst all the goofs and gags, there are tender moments of humanity that can be seen throughout his films, even with the redemption of some of his most damaged and flawed characters. Now go on, look after that sister of yours. A great example of balancing sad with funny comes from this scene in Hunt for the Wilder People. Orphan Ricky Baker opens up to his reluctant foster uncle Hector about being abandoned by his mother. I bet she loved you, though. Doubt it. Well, you never know. You're pretty likable. And then we get a nice, subtle, funny moment. Good night, Sam. Oh. Oh, I haven't got that fixed yet. That's the essence of a Taika Waititi film. For years, he's fine-tuned his style to the point where these trademarks of his are instantly recognizable, and they truly resonate with an international audience. When speaking with the New Zealand Film Commission, Taika addressed what makes his films different. Quote, Although there is often darkness, there are also little bits of light to encourage hope and hold on to possibility. Prepare to leave the house. Is it dangerous? Extremely. 